Welcome to Gospel of Deliverance. I'm Rev. Steve Williams. Very happy to have you with me today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we prepare our hearts for His Word. Father, we thank you today that you are going to anoint us that we might truly receive, not just hear, but receive it and grow by your Word. God, we pray for your anointing. We pray, Lord God, that we have insight to your word. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Today we're going to be talking about the bonds of peace. The bonds of peace. Concerns over a nation's path and a nation ending, those are not new worries. Uh, they have been a concern to all reasonable, pe all reasonable people in all eras. Yet there are two camps, divided by beliefs secular and Christian. The former believes all is well and will continue to grow into a perfect society. The latter believes in the spoilage of country by being an enemy of the gospel state. And that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be looking at uh, several verses. But I want to begin with some commentary. Uh, from some people of the past of this country and how we got to where we are today and the concerns that this country has. Uh, talking specifically of the United States, and of course this could apply to many different countries. Thomas Paine, author of Common Sense, a treatise on governmental structure, also wrote in the Age of Reason... He said, I do not believe in the creed professed by the Jewish church, by the Roman church, by the Greek church, or by the Turkish church, by the Protestant church, nor by any church that I know of. My own mind is mine own church. All national institutions of churches, whether Jewish, Christian, or Turkish, appear to me no other than human inventions set up to terrify and enslave mankind and monopolize power and profit. And that was Thomas Paine, uh, who is so well known for common sense. And unfortunately, his common sense in the political realm did not show common sense in the religious realm. Elias Boudinot wrote in the Age of Revelation, and this was his response to Paine's Age of Reason, he said, but an anxious desire that our country should be preserved from the dreadful evil of becoming enemies to the religion of the gospel, which I have no doubt but would be introductive of the dissolution of government and the bonds of civil society. And here we are, friends, um, a couple of hundred years plus beyond the writing of Boudinot and Payne, and we are seeing the dissolution of government, and definitely the bonds of civil society have been lifted. They no longer are taking care of us. Why? Because they have forsaken the gospel of Christ. John Adams said on October 11, 1798, John Adams, our second president, said, While our country remains untainted with the principles and manners which are now producing desolation in so many parts of the world, while she continues sincere and incapable of insidious and impious policy, we shall have the strongest reason to rejoice in the local destination assigned us by providence. In other words, by God. And that is providence with a capital P. Not a small P, but the providential hand of God. They've got, re they've got a reason to rejoice. But he continued, But should the people of America once become capable of that deep simulation towards one another and towards foreign nations which assumes the language of justice and moderation while it is practicing inequity and extravagance, and displays in the most captivating manner the charming pictures of candor, frankness, and sincerity, while it is rioting in rapine and insolence. This country 
will be the most miserable habitation in the world because we have no government armed with power capable of contending with human passions unbridled by morality and religion. Mark those words. He's continued and said, Avarice, ambition, revenge, or gallantry would break the strongest cords of our Constitution as a whale goes through a net. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. If you want to know why the United States is nosediving, there is the reason why. Friends, the Constitution was not made to take care of unreligious people. It was made for the Christian and the devout Jew, not not for the unlearned in Christianity and Judaism. Mark those words. This country is failing because she has gone away from those teachings of Christ which was at her foundation. James 3:16 through 18. James 3:16 through 18. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. does not sound like our country, where you have riots daily now. And this has been going on for the better part of a year. And here we have the opposite of peace. We have confusion. The bonds of peace require certain behavior. They require that we put ourselves under the hand of providence, as Elias Boudinot wrote, and as John Adams wrote. Friends, to be under the hand of God's providential care, we must have peace in our hearts. Ephesians 4, 3. Ephesians 4 and verse 3 endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Here comes that word, bond of peace. We must have peace, and that's why this country literally is going to hell in a handbasket, carried by its senators and congresspeople, its president, and all of those in charge, all of those in charge of these cities that are being rioted, these states that are being overrun by anarchists, Why? There is no peace. No peace can be found because there is no Christ amongst them. Christ has been shoved off to the side and the world rules. They do not endeavor to have a unity of spirit in the bond of peace. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 3 and 4. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 3 and 4. For when they shall say peace and safety, or prosperity and security, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Friends, we know what is coming, and we know what they are doing. They are crying, oh, this is going to bring peace and prosperity. This is going to help us. The country's going to be better off for it. Friends, confusion is confusion and peace is peace. It is what it is. It is what it is. Prosperity and security. They say it. They cry for it. The peace and the safety. They want everybody to be safe, they say. But indeed, they're not in peace at all. F.B. Meyer wrote of these verses in 1 Thessalonians, The world spends its days in careless indifference, sleep, he says, or in sensual enjoyment, drunkenness, 
but believers are bidden to be soldier-like in their attire and watchfulness. We believers should never be caught off guard by what is going on in the world. As uh, I was growing up, I remember race riots in the 1960s, 1970s. And in the midst of um, Mound City, Illinois, which saw many race riots along with Cairo, my father set up a gospel tent and my entire family was there. Uh, my uncle and his wife was there at Mound City. Her parents were there. All of us assembled together and large crowds of Christians whose skin color was black were there. I remember that the sheriff came and said, you need to stop these mixed race services. And my father replied and said, no worry is needed. We're not here as blacks and whites. We are here as one nation as Christians, and we had no incidents, no problems, no issues, because we were there about Jesus Christ. Friends, where Jesus is, there is peace. Where Jesus is not, there is confusion. And you say, well, yeah, but what about this and what about that, and we need this and we need that. Let me tell you what, the Jews expected Jesus to be the lion when he came. They were waiting for him to pick up sword and go against the enemy, Rome, at that time, and deliver them, free them, subjugate those that had been rulers. But that is not how he came. He came in the kingdom of peace. And likewise, we are still in that kingdom of peace. I've just preached this not long ago. We are in His kingdom of peace right now to be ruled through peace and the church is that vessel. The church, every believer, is a vessel of peace, not a vessel of wrath. Reading from the pulpit commentary regarding 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 3 and 4, namely the unbelieving world, peace and safety, Peace denoting internal rest, and safety external security. Sudden destruction cometh upon them. When they thought themselves most secure, they were then in the greatest danger. When they were most off their guard, then the crisis came. As travail upon a woman with child, the primary point of resemblance is certainly the suddenness and unexpectedness of the event. As labor comes upon a woman suddenly, so sudden destruction cometh upon the ungodly world. Still, however, the unavoidable, the unavoidableness of the judgment may also be here intimated. There is no possibility of escape. This is implied in the last clause, they shall not escape. They shall not escape. They shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. We will escape. But the non-believer, it says in verse 3, and they shall not escape. They think that they are working towards peace and prosperity, but they are not. They are working toward an end that God has already ordained against sin, against rebels. So if you want to know why this country is failing, it is because it is ruled by rebels. And yes, we, can, we will do our best to vote. Come up in two years if we all still be here. And we vote for those that we know will uphold our Constitution and hopefully that will stem the tide. But friend, I'm telling you now, Jesus has an upcoming end. He has an end for all of this mess this mess of humanity that have rebelled against Him and they have denied Him and they have said no to His saving grace. And just as Jehovah set down a dividing line in the Old Testament, in that first covenant, so He will do again. It will happen. John Gill said about this verse, 
when they shall sing a requiem to themselves, promise themselves much ease and peace for years to come, and imagine their persons and property to be very secure from enemies and oppressors, and shall flatter themselves with much and long temporal happiness as on the men of the old world in the times of Noah and on the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah in the days of Lot. For as these will be the days of the Son of Man. Friends, all of these people with Black Lives Matter and so many radicals, socialists, are saying, well, this is going to lead for our peace. It's going to take us into a realm of peace. We're going to have everybody on the same level. Everybody's going to make the same amount of money. Meanwhile, they're lying. And those that said that they want, um, they want righteous ruling and they want justification and they want justice for blacks are buying millions of dollars worth of homes in white neighborhoods. That doesn't sound right, does it? That's being two-faced, being insincere. Let me tell you what, friends. No good Christian, no Christian can be a bigot. No Christian can be against a person of other color. Why? Because we all know there is no race. It's, there's no races. There are no different colors. We're all one blood. That's what the Bible tells us. One blood. One race. And every intelligent Christian knows it. And understands it. Friends, I don't care what color you are. I don't care from what country you are. I don't care if your country is communist if it's repressive or as free as can be. If you know Jesus, you're my brother and my sister. That is what is important. That is all that matters, is who you are in Christ, not where you're from, and not what your country is doing. It is sad that we have so many people, and I've seen so many Christians side with these riots and saying, well, I understand, and this is, uh, they're just trying to get justice. No, friends. Rioting and hurting people and damaging people's lives and their livelihoods is not right. That is why this country is going downhill on a very sharp decline. Lots of people are not going to like this sermon. Because they want to hold on. Some want to hold on to their bigotry. Some people of color want to hold on to their bigotry. And they want to hate and they want to proclaim Christ. You can't pro proclaim Christ and proclaim hatred. You can't proclaim Christ and proclaim bigotry. Cannot be. And all of those that have tried to stamp out history because there's some things that are not nice in it. They don't want to remember it. Go and take a lesson from the Jews. Because God instructed them to remember. That's why He gave them the bitter herbs at the time of feasting. Because He wanted them to remember how hard things were. When they were oppressed. When they were slaves. Remember and how I brought you out. Friends, we don't want to forget the past. The past are full of mistakes and sins, and we need to remember it. We don't need to forget it, because it will bring peace to our souls. It will help us to get rid of the past and look only to the future that Christ has for us. John Wesley said of these same verses, When the thoughtless are persuading themselves that there is no ground for apprehension, then destruction shall come as suddenly as the pangs of childbirth. The thoughtless. Oh, this country is full, the world is full of thoughtless ones that are paying no attention to God. They don't believe in God. They don't believe that He seeks justice, that He seeks revenge for rebellion. They don't believe it. They don't see it. They blame it on everything else. They blame it on climate change. 
They blame it on man. Everything's under the control of humankind, they believe. They don't want to believe that there is a God in heaven that will and is seeking justice against His glory and His holiness. Because they have blasphemed Him. Many in the church have blasphemed Him. Many churches have blasphemed His holy word. His word, which is, should be untouchable, has been touched. They have straddled the fence to the point to where they take the side of the world and the side of societal normalization and sexualization. Friends, it is time for us to stand in peace. Friends, just as Jehovah warned Israel in Ezekiel chapter 13, so this age is warned against their preparations for safety. They are indeed. We're warned against it. It will not matter what they do to prepare. For God will have His way and He will seek vengeance against every single rebel. And every rebel is defined as those who will not accept Christ as Savior, who do not repent of their sins, and who rebel against His Word. That is who God is seeking vengeance against. They, along with every murderer that is unrepentant, every rapist that is unrepentant, every bigot that is unrepentant, every thief that is unrepentant, every liar that is unrepentant, along with all of those that think they're good and they are doing good for their country, if they do not repent, they will die and go to hell and God counts them as rebels. That's why we need to repent now. That's why they must kneel down now and repent of their sin. Ezekiel chapter 13, and we're going to be reading in verses 10 through 14. Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 10 through 14. Because, even because they have seduced my people, saying, Peace, and there was no peace, and one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. Say unto them which daub it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstones, shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. Lo, when the wall is fallen, shall it not be said unto you, Where is the daubing wherewith ye daubed it? Therefore thus saith the Lord God, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury. And there shall be an overflowing shower in mine anger and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. So will I break down the wall that ye have daubed with untempered mortar and bring it down to the ground so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered and it shall fall and ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof and ye shall know that I am the Lord. You will know. Country, as you are out there and you're doing exactly as you please and you're rioting and you're destroying people's livelihoods and you're killing people and you're blaming people and you're accusing people and all of you radicals that are in the Congress and in the Senate, as you proclaim what you to be, believe to be truth, know this, God says that you shall be consumed in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. But it will be too late for many. It will be too late to repent at that point when He's already taken you to the grave. It will be too late. Now is the time of repentance. Now is the day. Right now is the day of salvation. And if we want to see change, it comes through peace in our hearts, recognizing that God is in control and not man. Do not be afraid of what BLM and what these Antifa folks are doing and what all of the radicals on the left are saying and doing. Friends, it does not matter. And those that are in other countries, it doesn't matter what government is doing. 
It matters what Jesus Christ, the righteous King of the universe, is doing. That is all that matters in our lives, is that Jesus is on the throne still. He is in control, and everything is going according to His plan, right down to the last little bitty iota. It's all being done at His hand. Friends, let us rejoice that Christ is in control. Let us be at peace when everyone else is in confusion. When the country seems to be falling apart, as now as I minister this, they're talking about packing the Supreme Court. Of course, we knew this would come. So that they can radically change more of our country. They want to do it because it's not good enough. And it's not good enough because its roots are found in the Bible. And that just won't do for people that don't believe in God, for people that believe in themselves, for people that believe in Satan, for people that believe in other false religions. Having God Jehovah for their Lord is not good enough. They want to get rid of every vestige of Christianity in this country. They want rid of every bit of Judaism in this country. You'll notice that they don't want to get rid of the Muslim religion. They don't care about uh, the science, the, those people that are all involved in the science fiction religion. L. Ron Hubbard's church that he began. They don't care about that. They don't care about the feckless church that stands with them supporting all manner of sexual sins. They don't care about that. They don't want to be told that sin is sin. And therefore, we are the enemy. But Jesus was the enemy before. And friends, I'm happy to be in His company. And all of us should be glorying to God that we are in the company of Christ Jesus, that we're standing with Him, not against Him, that we're standing with His Word, not the Word of man, not the societal changes raised by man. We must stand fast in the peace of Christ holding on to the bond of unity through the Holy Ghost. Let us hold on. Let us not be caught. As when a thief comes in to rob someone in the middle of the night, let us not be caught off guard, but let us be aware. Let us be sober. Let us be vigilant against all of this junk that is going on. Don't be swayed by the world's ways because black lives matter and so do white lives and red lives and yellow lives and brown lives all of them matter because they're one color they're one blood they are all the same and one does not matter more than the next color wise God is no respecter of persons he doesn't care whether you're rich or poor he doesn't care what color you are he doesn't care what language you speak he cares for your soul, and wants us to repent and live for Him and take Him as King and Savior and Lord of our lives, King of the universe. That is Him. I want us to go to Him in prayer right now that we would truly be able to get this down into our hearts that what's happened to this country was foreseeable. that what has occurred in this country was foretold because any country that denies God's law begins to fall. Father, we come before you humbly and we beg your forgiveness. We ask you to set your people apart that you You put your arms around us. Gather us as you wanted to do to Jerusalem, but they would not. 
gather us together, your church, and give us your protection in this time of upheaval. We pray, Lord God, for your love and your peace in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for it, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you have a good day in Christ. God bless. Goodbye.